Hi, and welcome to this latest immigration law update video. In this video, I wanted to look at the subject of Article 3 and material deprivation cases and look at how the Supreme Court judgment in AM Zimbabwe, which was the health case uh, that reached the Supreme Court, is having wider implications. Uh, and what I'm going to do is look at a case called Ainty Material Deprivation, Article 3, AM Zimbabwe, 2021, UK UT 203. And it's a decision from the 22nd of July. July 2021. This was a Somali deportation case. In the first year, they'd dismissed the asylum case, but allowed on human rights, Article 3 and 8 grounds, and also on humanitarian protection grounds. Uh, this was reconsidered then by the Upper Tribunal. And the Upper Tribunal look at the country guidance on Somalia, which is MOJ. And MOJ had raised concerns about the conditions in IDP camps in Somalia. And after MOJ, there was an interpretation that effectively said, if you're going to be in an IDP camp, that would breach Article 3. Now, that was corrected by the Court of Appeal in a case called, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, SAID, that's 2016 EWCA Civ 442. Uh, and the Court of Appeal said in that case, just, just because you go in an IDP camp doesn't automatically mean Article 3 would be breached. But there's a bit of a, a corrective turn in, in this case, and look at a head note one, because it says, Said is not to be read to exclude the possibility that Article 3 could be engaged by conditions of extreme material deprivation. So when I talk about material deprivation, it's going back to these appalling conditions. Factors to be considered include the location where the harm arises and whether it results from deliberate action or omission. Now, in cases involving material deprivation that is not intentionally caused, obviously different where the harm is intentionally caused, the threshold is now the modified N test set out in AM Zimbabwe. So we're seeing AM Zimbabwe being applied just beyond the, the health sphere to cases of going back to, to terrible situations of, of material deprivation that is not intentionally caused. So the question now will be whether there's a real risk that the individual concerned will be exposed to intense suffering or a significant reduction in life expectancy. A third quick point from the head note is that the qualification directive continues to have direct effect following the UK withdrawal from the EU. And just a couple of paragraphs from the, the judgment, uh, it's Upper Tribunal Judge Bruce, paragraph 61, that there is no jurisprudential distinction between health cases and those concerned with going back to these situations of material deprivation. So what they say at paragraph 62 is while the convention has expanded and each sort of spurt of growth must be carefully considered, by applying Papushvili to a situation of, uh, uh, of material deprivation, the tribunal is not adding to that growth, they're applying the law as it currently stands because uh, it, the N threshold has been modified by Papashvili. That was recognised in AM Zimbabwe and the tribunal is saying, well, there's no difference in, in material deprivation cases to health uh, cases. So we're not looking for an imminence of death on return to Somalia from the conditions that you're going to return to, but rather whether you'd be exposed to conditions resulting in intense suffering or a significant reduction in life expectancy, such that the humanitarian case for granting leave is compelling. So have a look at this case, particularly if you're dealing with somebody returning to a situation uh, uh, such as an IDP camp in Somalia or a similar terrible situation where there is material deprivation. It's the judgment in Inti from the Upper Tribunal, and I'll put the link in the notes. I hope that's helpful to you. Thanks again for listening.